A ship with 376 passengers leaves India. After a few weeks, it arrives in Vancouver, Canada, where a horrible disaster awaits. The people are sent back to India, where they get arrested and some executed. All because they're brown. Around the same time, Chinese immigrants have to pay $500, the equivalent of $30,000 today, to enter Canada. All due to their race. Today, I speak with politicians, business leaders, first-generation immigrants to uncover the scary past and the promising future of discrimination in Canada. If I'm brown, will I get hired? What's my success rate compared to white people? After one week, I got fired. It's shocking when you read it. Sometimes it does hurt me. West Vancouver, 2023. This is one of the most affluent and desirable communities in Vancouver. Many residents are multimillionaires with generational wealth behind them and some dark past. No person of the African or Asian race shall reside or be allowed to remain on the premises. This line in British Columbia land titles remains part of symbolic segregation present today. My parents always expressed a real curiosity about people who are different. And a curiosity means let's learn and let's understand as opposed to a judgment call that someone who is different isn't as good as us or doesn't deserve what we've got. Karin Kirkpatrick is a member of the British Columbia Parliament fighting to remove discriminatory covenants from the province's legal documents. Her values are opposite to the segregative state of land titles. I've asked my family members, how would you feel if you read this document and it was something that was upsetting and hurtful and it just reminds people of what we've had to go through and what people deal with and what people still deal with today and when you find language like that it reminds people and it, it in some ways perhaps even legitimizes continued racism it's shocking when you read it um, it would uh, base on somebody's sex on um, somebody's religion um, uh, on somebody's color, diversity, that they would not be allowed to uh, own or even reside on property in certain communities here. The fact that we could still read that on a document in 2023 is unacceptable. When you look at the diversity in the British Columbia government, a big question rises. Why do they still allow racist remarks in the provincial legislation? Despite introducing a bill that would remove them a few years back, Karin hasn't reached her goal just yet. So the bill died on the order paper. So because that happened in the next sitting of the legislature, I reintroduced that bill in hopes that government would actually debate the bill, uh, put it on the order paper and, uh, and see if we could actually make some change. It didn't happen again. So as you can imagine, when the House comes back in uh, October of this year, my goal would be to once again reintroduce that bill and hope that government here in British Columbia, our NDP government, will you know, be true to their word to really fight racism and discrimination in the province and work to make sure that we can address this very, very discriminatory and hurtful language. There is a strong tool we have to fight discrimination. Watch this video until the very end to see how you can help MLA Kirkpatrick pass this anti-discrimination bill. Even though I'm an immigrant, I'm white, and this puts me in an extremely privileged position. In many ways, it's easier for me to travel, own property, and even apply for jobs. Our next character is a senior manager at a university who faced an unfair recruitment practice, simply due to the color of his skin. HR wanted proof of my previous qualifications. To put it into context, the, that particular job required having a bachelor's degree. I already had a master's degree, the proof of which was readily available to HR. However, HR wanted proof of my bachelor degrees that were obtained outside of Canada. And my hiring manager never asked me for those and I never found out about it at that moment. So only years later, you know, a little over a year later, I find out that um, I was the only hire on the team who was ever asked to pro produce proof of previous education. Was the other applicant white? Yes. Sanchez came to Canada only a few years ago, but due to his skills and ingenuity, he climbed the ladder in multiple companies, 
His rank allows him to travel business class. In my current role, I do also have the privilege of traveling business class. I am the only person in the queue who has asked or who is reminded if I am in the correct zone or to show my boarding pass to prove that I am supposed to be in the zone or supposed to be in this section. Even at home, Sancha doesn't feel welcome. After having lived in one of Toronto's best areas for over a year, the concierge at his building constantly checks if he's a food delivery person, making him feel the clear line of separation between him and other residents. I think for, for the most part, my brain has accepted it is what it is kind of narrative, but sometimes it, it, it does irritate me, sometimes it does hurt me. Hypernormalization is the process of adjusting one's mind to extreme conditions to get accustomed to them. I'd like you to think of slavery in the 17th century. Despite the fact that often slaves outnumbered their masters, they never had enough people to say no and revolt. Why? Their minds were hypernormalized to their state of slavery. Today, especially in countries like Canada, we live with immense freedom compared to back then. However, Hypernormalization can pose a serious danger to many minorities. Oftentimes, I see my colleagues when things happen to them, they don't speak. What are they scared of? Scared of uh, termination, scared of that uh, of retaliation, scared of that their name is going to be somewhere and someone is going to pick up on them. This is the leadership team of Scotia Bank, the bank Hassan worked at. The vast majority is white which trickles down to certain workplace practices. Being a first-generation Canadian and having lived in Canada for over 20 years, Hassan was stunned when he heard his colleague's comment. What happened is during lunch break, all of a sudden we were having a discussion. I was in Toronto and we were just having a casual conversation and we were eating the desserts. And, and then there was another colleague of us. Uh, she works in bankruptcy at third floor, as I remember. And I don't know how the conversation went to the Alberta, the province in Alberta. And we were talking about the Albertans and my experience with Albertans. So I concluded and I was saying that how I really like Albertans. They are kind of different from Ontarians. They're a little bit more authentic. And I think I I really, I really like them and I think they do really like me a lot. And then all of a sudden, Noura, her name was Noura Martin, and she snapped at me, her, her face turned red, and she looked at me and she snapped, and she's like, they don't know how brown you are. And I was shocked. I was literally shocked. I was frozen. Soon after, Hassan couldn't come into work for one week due to personal reasons and the unthinkable happened. So eventually I, I communicated this to my manager and after one week I got fired. I was wow. let go. Yeah, yeah. And I did reach out to the senior management at that time. It was uh, Shauna Chadwick. Uh, I know Dan Reese, he was the head because uh, he was the head of the uh, where I worked. And I reached out to Barb Mason, she's the head of HR and nothing happened. Not all organizations are the same. After finding a new job at a different bank, Hassan feels much more satisfied. How do you feel at Bank of Montreal? Do oh God, well? oh, how, oh, huge. Bank of Montreal is like Royal Bank. They have a very uh, clear guidelines and, and, and protections and so on. So it, it is very well. I'm very, very glad. I'm very happy I love this bank. During my investigation into racism, I reached out to my community on Instagram. Many people came forward, but luckily not all of them faced discrimination. How many years have you been in Canada for? Four happy years. <laughs> Four happy years. So happy with no incidents of racism. Not at all. Not even a single one. <laughs> Jennifer came from beautiful Colombia as an international student and is now working at a multinational company in Canada. You work for a pretty big tech company and have you ever experienced that they were discriminatory or racist towards you? Not at all. I work for Accenture. It's a very big company and that's one of the reasons why I like to work for this company because they are very inclusive with everyone. I have like co-workers from like many countries. So do you feel like they treat you the same as other people like white Canadians? Yeah, totally. 
I believe it's important to recognize nothing is black or white. Some people never face discrimination, while others struggle with it every single day. But one thing's for sure. Do you remember the ship that was turned back to India because of its passengers? Despite the Kamagata Maru incident that happened in 1914, over 100 years ago, similar catastrophes can occur again. We all remember Ocean Gate, a submarine with four billionaires on board that embarked to discover Titanic. Due to technical issues, the vessel imploded. The shocking is the reaction of multiple governments. The rescue mission included the armed forces of the US and Canada, which sent their navies to tirelessly search for the submarine. At the same time, a ship with 500 refugees drowned off the coast of Greece. The catastrophe was monitored, but no solid action was taken. Racism is artificial. We're not born with it. Just like two cats, one white, the other one black, would not treat each other differently because of the color of their fur. Racism is like software that's programmed with education. Software we can change. Important message to those who want to make a difference and fight hypernormalizing of discrimination. You can start today. If you live in British Columbia, look up who your MLA is and send them an email asking to remove discriminatory language from BC land titles. If you see any racist practices or even hints at racism at your workplace, report to upper management. If appropriate action is not taken, take it a step further and report to the Ministry of Labor of your province and then the Federal Ministry of Labor. If you are mistreated because you look different, that's not okay. Fight in a way that makes most sense to you. Together, we can reprogram the systems that surround us to live in a more just world. Please comment below your experience. Let me know if you like this format of videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.